Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm Ian. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to talk about 1997 horror sci-fi classic Event Horizon. This is a film by director Paul W.S. Anderson, who you might have already heard me sort of rant on before. At this stage in his career, Paul Anderson had just completed the very, very successful Mortal Kombat movie, and that was his first studio movie. As a result of the success from that, the studio was really quick to want to get him to work on another project, so much so that they offered him the first X-Men movie and Alien Resurrection. And I'm so glad that he turned both of those down. <laughs> then again, he still would go on later to fuck up the Alien universe <laughs> anyway. But lo and behold, back to his or, the origins of his career. After doing the PG uh, Mortal Kombat movie, he wanted to do something dark and sinister. Yeah, We'd already seen throughout the 90s and the 80s some fantastic science fiction movies. Not always sci-fi horror. Of course, we only really have the Alien movies that really sets the standard mm. for sort of horror movies in space. And he wanted to do something dark and grisly and, in my opinion, really, really achieved it. This, for me, is his pinnacle movie before his career just continued to hit rock bottom, especially with the fucking Resident Evil movies. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Event Horizon? Well, the story follows the ship, the Event Horizon, which had been lost in space and returns seven years later. Uh, a rescue crew on the Lewis and Clark are sent to find out what happened to the crew, led by uh, Lawrence Fishburne. They take along with them uh, Sam Neill, who plays Dr. Weir, who constructed the gravity drive that powers the Event Horizon. When they get there, they find out that something has come back with the ship. Just like Gary, I fucking love this movie. The first time I saw it, the first time I was told about it, somebody said to me, you have to see this, it's like doom in space. And I was just like, oh, really, what? And then f when I first started watching it, I was just got this big haunted house, haunted spaceship feeling about it. It's the first scene that you see of the event horizon hanging in orbit of, of Jupiter, I think it is. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just flown in orbit and it just looks fucking evil. You know, you, you take this POV shot into the ship and you see that there's no gravity, stuff is floating all over the place, and then you come across this body on the bridge. It's sort of floating and spinning. Yeah, and for me, that just cemented that, you know, this was going to be a fucking scary, nasty film. It's sort of that one scene sort of sets up the rest of the movie, although it does still confuse me slightly because it is Sam Neill's character, Dr. Weir, mm. that's floating there on the bridge. And so it's instantly foreshadowing no, what's no, to become of him because no, it, it, he instantly wakes up from that nightmare. That's so it's almost, crew. for me, it doesn't look like one of the crew. It looks like that is Sam Neill. That looks like Dr. Weir yeah. on, on the ship. And for me, it's a foreshadowing of what's to come because... I don't know whether at that point he's got the call that the Event Horizon's turned up yet, or whether it's the ship calling him back, because throughout the movie we watch Dr. Weir sort of sort of succumb to the ship. Yeah. It sort of happens gradually, and then happens fucking instantaneously. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think it means anything. But the film itself has, um, has been said that it was inspired by films like The Shining, mm. which you'll see with obvious blood tanks yeah. uh, towards the end. It's also inspired by the likes of Alien, where it almost has that truckers in space vibe and feel, yeah. where everything looks used and dirty. And especially with the characters, the characters sort of camaraderie with each other. You yeah. get the feeling like this crew on the Lewis and Clark have been working with each other for a very long time. Uh, there's a deleted scene where you actually see the Lewis and Clark on a different salvage rescue mission prior to getting the call to go onto the event horizon. The gloomy Gus in the corner over there, that's... Uh... DJ. Trauma. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now we all know each other. Skipper, I got a question. Sure. So you, you really get to feel like this family unit uh, really works with each other. Yeah, yeah. The dialogue between the characters is really good. Uh, you sort of, you get a sense of who each character is. And Paul Anderson actually said to all of the characters, he was like, these are the characters you're playing. 
you make up your backstories, you dress your bunks the way you think your character should. Yeah. So they all pulled from their own inspirations, and so they really fleshed out their characters, which really added um, that believability to some of the things that was going to happen. And of course, we have a fantastic cast in this movie, being led by Lawrence Fishburne, who had already done some some very successful movies. I mean, I think the most successful one he did was Apocalypse Now prior, prior to this. He also did some other movies, but of course, this is just just before he went on to do Matrix. Yeah. And you also get to see, like, when he's on the, on the Lewis and Clark, when you see the crew there, it almost reminds me instantly of the other yeah. ships from the Matrix. Yeah, him sat in the uh, captain's chair. Exactly. Orders. He, he was almost uh, calling Morpheus in that point <laughs> yeah. in time. And so we also get Sam Neill. And Sam Neill is... Is is a an actor who's not always been in such the most memorable films. I think the most memorable film he ever did was still going to be Jurassic Park. Yeah. Of course, he returns to the Jurassic Park franchise in the third movie, which less said the better. I still enjoy him in that movie. Yeah. Uh, he also did Daybreak, where he played the villainous character with um, this blood sucking corporate vampire. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I also, as a callback, the first time I ever saw him in a movie was in Dead Calm. Yeah, And of Dead course Calm we get to awesome. see his hero moments in that as well, where he's just an everyday kind of guy. Following them, we also have Jason Isaacs, another British actor, who just delivers this sort of... Um, he almost comes across as a, as a villain. I think almost in every time I see him, I see him as a villain. <laughs> and so even though he's playing a good guy, and we don't always get to see all the things that are happening to him... We definitely get a sense that he's a very tormented soul. Think that would be a prize? I mean, you would have killed the last fucking group, oh, and now you would have killed us as well. Fuck, oh, DJ! Fucking sick, right? Just, oh, shit. Do you understand? It's just a big hunk of metal. There's nothing odd going on. Yeah. And then, of course, in complete contrast, we have another fantastic British actor, Sean Pertwee, <laughs> who just F's him, blinds his way through <laughs> yeah. every scene, and is always smoking a cigarette. Excuse me, uh, that's Vanessa, and that's mine. Uh, this attractive piece of paper represents space time, and you want to get from point A here. Oh. So that's it. Each, each one of these characters just cements, you know, their part in the story. You know, you, you kind of can't wait for them to get aboard because you really want to see what's going to happen to them and, you know, what evilness the ship has brought back with them. But you just feel like you're part of the crew when you're sat there just listening to what the mission is as they get there. And then obviously they do get to the event horizon, they turn the power on and the engine comes alive. This for me is, is where it starts to become a lot like the doom universe because it opens a black hole and it just opens up a black hole within the ship and the first person that pulls in is justin and that's it he's fucking you know tormented you don't know how long he's been inside this this other world until he's pulled back out but when he comes out he does not look happy <laughs> the dark <laughs> What I really like about the horror of this movie is the psychology of it. Because the original script, when it was presented to the studio and to Paul Anderson, involved aliens. The ship had gone through the black hole, gone to an alien planet, yeah. and brought the alien back with it. And it would have just become a very formulaic sort of aliens movie. Yeah. But it just wouldn't have been to that same standard, even though it emulated all those things. So the idea to actually have it be a hell dimension yeah. or whether it's the biblical hell it's sort of unknown and what i like is that all of the characters are constantly asking questions they so as an audience member you're also trying to figure it out and you're making your own sort of ideas about what's happening and then none of the answers are given to you you see dr weir and he's just like i don't know where has it been for the last seven years look i don't know i don't know is not good enough doctor you're supposed to be the fucking expert I need answers, that's your job. Now the other place, where is that? I don't know, I don't know. And so you're kind of just left to, to enforce your own beliefs on what's happening. From hell. You don't believe in that kind of stuff, do you? What I like is that the, the, the event horizon itself is built and based upon the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. 
Um, so the Event Horizon actually being this dark foreboding gothic emblem of, of religion yeah. becoming this hell hellish nightmare that there is no escape from unless you literally want to do a Justin and out the airlock. <laughs> It's the only way you're going to escape it. But even then, we also see other characters. The ship's not going to let you leave. No. <laughs> and that is just the pure evil that this film captures. It's hard for me to even call upon any other movie that has this real malevolent evil about it. Especially, I think, because of those hell sequences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell is that the, i mean the first time you you hear it you don't see it no and just that instant sound of that distorted screaming noise is an instant what the fuck i'm not sure if it qualifies as language it's just tormented souls i i i, I want to go back to the the ship the ship itself is a character as well. And oh, like, like you said, it just looks fucking evil. And then when you get on board and it just starts psychically hitting you with what what has happened to the original crew, and you only get quick flashes of images of what's happened to them. I've always wanted to just slow it down and just watch each one like in a millisecond. Ave Atque Vale. Hail and farewell. What is that? I'll run it through a few filters, see if I can clean it up. But then I'm afraid to because of the flashing of it, of barbed wire being wrapped around people, things coming out of their mouths, people being torn apart. known that he that Paul Anderson did make a, a 130 minute version of this film and the test audience looked at it and was like no you have to cut those images out it is way too violent and I'm like really compared to some of the shit we see nowadays I'd love to see this 130 minute version of Event Horizon I want to I want to be in this chaos realm that they've gone to this is this is a feeling what? I get is the ship went through a portal and went to some hellish chaos world you know, and some demonic entity has come aboard and just eviscerated everything in its path and has crushed the souls of the crew into the ship. See, what I would like to see from that extended cut isn't necessarily all of the gore. Now, in interviews with Paul Anderson, he explained, like, some of the imagery that's there. Now, let me show you... And it is very gruesome. When you just look at it, you can see that this guy has had this spike shoved up his ass and out of his mouth and yeah. spewing out at the same time all of his intestines. <sighs> it is gross on such a, an unbelievable level. So even though it is it's very quick, it has such an impact. Yeah. So therefore, I don't think I would like to see any more <laughs> of the extended gore bits. What I would have really liked would have been more character progression, especially with Dr. Weir's character, because I like the small transitions he takes towards becoming sort of indoctrinated into becoming a slave of the ship. Yeah. Where especially where we see him in the green sort of corridors of, of the internal workings of the Event Horizon, and he has flashes of his wife, and he is guilt-ridden with the fact that he has spent more time with his work than he has with the rest of his life. And I think yeah. the film also has a bit of a, as a sort of underlying met, uh, metaphor in the film because there's a lot of the characters are also sort of wanting to go home and they're just working too hard. Yeah. And so there's sort of an underlying theme there. I would like to see more of the characters sort of dialogue and interactions with each other because we don't get to see all of the characters' hallucinations. We only get to follow just a select few of the characters and their problems. And so for me, the film's pacing is slightly off as it is, 
But I want those scenes restored because I want more characters. I don't necessarily need to see the gore. The gore that's in the film, even now, is still fantastic and it still gives that same impact. I can understand the fact that they cut some gore away because I think just like any horror movie, and it's always been said, the less you show, the better. I see. Well, that's exactly what we don't have, Doctor. Yeah. Uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, the, that would actually balance it out a bit more with having the investment into the characters and knowing their backstories to then obviously having the extra gore scenes when they're having their, their own hallucinations. I mean, it's like Miller's character. He talks about the, the guy that he tried to save on the other salvage ship and how obviously the flames could flow over the guy and he just knew he couldn't save this guy as he's on fire. But the way he describes fire and zero G, I, I don't get the same feeling that he's trying to put across from me I, I would if I actually saw it, which obviously would lead into more backstory, which would then lead into more hallucinations. But as a balance, it would it would work. I, I feel it would work because you'd have these characters that you're invested to. You'd have this scary ass motherfucking ship. You don't want to put them on there because you know they're going to get eviscerated. But you can't help yourself because obviously you want to progress the story and find out where the event horizon has gone to. And it's, it's what makes this film so fucking awesome it always makes me laugh at the beginning of the film where when they first get to the event horizon and then they dock on uh, landing platform 13 yeah. it's like <laughs> and, this is the main one it's like really where's the other 12 and then and then they, he docks on by loading onto the antenna anyway like okay you're gonna not listen to the doctor who's just told you not to park it there no but what makes me laugh is the fact that it's all the americans that go onto the event horizon and all the european crew just sort of stay back and watch from the monitors <laughs> See, some people have said that obviously the, the special effects for the ships are quite dated now. And I, I would agree the film is almost 18, 19 years old. But for the time that it was released, th these were still really good special effects. And I, I like the way that obviously it's a mixture between computer graphics and models. But I, I just love Sean Pertwee's you know, attitude of, I'm not staying on this fucking ship. I'd rather stand outside in zero G fixing my other ship just to get the fuck out of here. Listen, I'd rather spend the next 12 hours outside than another five seconds in this shit can. And I'm like, well, I'm with him. I'll stand, <laughs> I'll, I'll stay out there. <laughs> You've seen the meat grinder. <laughs> that, that tunnel, like, to what Why? actual scientific purpose did that tunnel have? Well, I mean, <laughs> Weir obviously explains it that it, it contains the magnetic fields that the, the, the generator is giving off. But, but it, it need still to look looks like, like that. <laughs> I'm like, you, you walk down this really dark, scary-ass corridor lined with explosives just in case, you know, you need to escape. <laughs> then you walk into this scary-ass meat grinder corridor and then once you do get past that, you stand in front of this fucking Cenobite trophy in the middle of a room with all these spikes and I'm just like I would not be here that's not a safe <laughs> place to work no. <laughs> I will say there is some poor CGI work in there and that mainly comes from the sort of debris that's floating around yeah. on the ship I do like the crystal uh, body when it smashes and hits the ground um, I thought that was cool. I liked the, the little nod to the watch that's floating in space. It was the same watch that Buzz Aldrin uh, yeah. wore on, on the first trip to the moon. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. The gore effects are fantastic. The ship design is fantastic. And I think a third of the film's budget went into one 40-second uh, shot. And that's when Dr. Weir is... I think he's, he's shaving. You have the jump scare for yeah. the blinds. And then he looks out the window and the camera does that sort of 360 sort of rotating pan effect where you have the the real actor then you have the miniature then you have the cgi station yeah. then you have the background and i think that uh, it was gone on to say that the guy who oversaw that effect left the business <laughs> after making that effect i don't understand why this film is so hated really on on like metacritic and imdb it's got such low scores i can understand that perhaps the film's pacing is a little bit off or that maybe it feels a little bit dated but this, for me, is a real genuine horror movie. It has a few typical jump scares yeah. right at the beginning. But after that, it is a deep psychological horror movie where you're watching these characters sort of falling apart, questioning what's going on, not being able to trust anybody or anything, yeah. and really coming to grips with the idea that they are all going to die in one hellish, nightmarish way, especially when they finally get to see 
the video footage of what's happened and Jason Isaacs gives the full translation of the Latin. I thought it said liberate me, save me, but it's not me. It's liberate tute me, save yourself, and it gets worse. Uh, I have a lot of favourite scenes in this film. Each one of them just builds up to just an ultimate climactic finish. But going back to the haunted house kind of theme of the film, there's the there's sequence where uh, Sam Neill climbs into the uh, air vents of the engine room and you've just got this green, small, square corridor that he's got to climb through and he just climbs for absolutely ages. And then when he finds the little circuit to fix the lights just start all flickering off and I'm just like, why the fuck are you here? Why the fuck am I watching you here? This shouldn't be here. And then obviously the lights come back on and his wife is there and her eyes open and she has no eyes and I'm like, fucking get out! Run! Just go! <laughs> That's my favourite sequence. <laughs> Again, I also have many favourite sequences in the film. There's one in particular that always got my interest and that's because I kind of in a morbid sort of curios curiosity way wanted to see what would happen to a human body in zero gravity, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in zero vacuum. And it is horrible when you see the veins all just sort of pop in, yeah. in, in his arms and the blood just sort of popping out of his eyes and you see him sort of, it's gruesome and horrible. And I'm sort of sat there like, wow, that's what would happen to a body. <laughs> um, it's also a very tense scene as well. And it's also a great insight into this evil where... When it controls Justin and Justin's just like telling the other characters, he's like, no, I want to die. I want to be out of here. The darkness that's within me is, is so bad. Yeah. I would rather be dead. If you could see the things I've seen, you wouldn't try to stop me. No, that's not you talking. That's not you talking. That's it. And then you're like, so that is him talking. And then all of a sudden, I don't want to die in here. And he doesn't yeah. want to die. And you're like, shit, the evil's just released him again. And just wondering <laughs> what the fuck's going on. And I'm just like, oh, that is so dark it is really pure evil right there every time i watch the movie i always get slightly disappointed with the ending however it is massively open to a sequel yeah and paul W. sanderson has always said that he might want to return to it to tell the story of what happens in the event horizon which i don't i never see the point in doing that because <laughs> we already know now yeah. it's kind of like doing the prequel to the thing we already know what yeah. happened to all the Norwegians. You might want to spill it slightly differently, but I would definitely love to see Lawrence Fishburne come back and see him in the hell nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I'm the one that got away. But still, as a favourite scene, I'm just going to have to say the whole fucking movie. <laughs> I love this movie. It engrosses me every time. I love the sci-fi aspects, the horror aspects. I forgive the small problems with the film by the things that the film does right. Definitely. I really recommend Event Horizon. It is, there's not many movies within that genre that I can recommend other than the Alien movies or any movies that have sort of that theme or flair. Event Horizon is a one-of-a-kind movie. I definitely recommend this movie. If you've never seen it, it's it's a good, scary-ass movie to sit down in the dark moment of the night to watch. If you have, go back. The Event Horizon has come back, and it's still fucking nasty. And now, it is time to go back. I know. To hell. You know nothing. Hell is only a word. The reality is much much worse. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Yes! Here I come, motherfucker!